Hey there! Welcome to another episode of the KSP Quick Guide series. This will be a short video about SSTO reentry tactics. The goal will be to land at the KSC from various altitudes using the SSTO we built in the last episode. A good SSTO not only makes it to orbit in one piece, but it can also return home safely. I'm sure you could calculate the angle of reentry given the right formulas, but uh, that requires a fair amount of time, and you'd likely need mods to give you the extra info needed to plug into those equations. I've got a couple rules of thumb that should guide you into the landing strip fairly easily without the use of your calculator. First off, we need to address the center of lift and mass on your SSTO. While these may have been placed correctly while you built and first flew the plane, you have likely drained a lot of your fuel by the time you're ready for a re-entry. This means that your center of mass will have shifted. If this is the case, you'll likely have an extremely uncontrollable craft as you enter the atmosphere. You can simulate this shift in mass in the space plane hangar by using the tweakable system to empty most of your fuel. Take off the landing gears as well to get a more accurate picture. If your center of lift is behind your center of mass after doing this, then you're golden. If it isn't, consider shifting some things around, or just remember that this happens and place your fuel in the forwardmost tanks before re-entry to shift the center of mass forwards. Either way works, but I prefer to do everything beforehand in the space plane hangar. The next step is getting to orbit. Check out my previous video on how to build a basic SSTO and get orbital if you need help with this step. Once you're in stable orbit and you've done all the things you want to do, it's time to head home. The ideal re-entry would be one that brings you right up to the landing strip using absolutely no fuel. As I said before, I don't doubt that you could calculate a re-entry close to this, but we have the handy dandy quick save feature to make trial and error a more viable option. Feel free to go manly mode and crunch the numbers if you want though. When I first learned to do re-entries, I was taught to focus on the peninsula to the east of the KSC. This is a great place to bring your periapsis over using a maneuver node. I use this as my target for almost any re-entry, regardless of how high my parking orbit is. The tricky thing is that you need to set up your maneuver node when you're about 2-3 to three minutes from where you plan to burn. The reason being that if you set up your maneuver node when you're halfway around the planet from that node, the peninsula will have moved. The planet rotates, making your original placement off target. Get close to where you want to burn and then set up the node. Next up is choosing how high to leave your periapsis. This is based entirely off of your current altitude. Other factors like your ship's mass and part count will affect how much the atmosphere slows you down. So what worked for one ship probably won't work for your next one. This is where a little bit of trial and error comes in, but if you're using the same ship to go to a space station or something, it can be handy to write down what periapsis altitude worked best for you. My personal cheat sheet for this SSTO is based around a 120 km orbit. From this orbit, I know that if I set the periapsis over the peninsula to around 24 kilometers, I'll be coming in perfect for landing at the KSC. Set up the maneuver node when the SSTO gets close to about 180 degrees from the peninsula, and you're good to go. Just burn once you arrive at that node and coast back down into the atmosphere. Feel free to go into 4 times physics warp when you're in the atmosphere. Just make sure your plane is pointing close to prograde or below it while you're still in thin atmosphere. Monitor how the atmosphere is slowing you down from the map view. Ideally you want to be coming in close to the mountains and still have the trajectory showing that you're coming in close to the KSC. A slight overshoot is best, but undershooting is perfectly fine. If you're at about 15 to 20 kilometers while you're soaring over the mountains, then you have done everything perfectly. You might need to use your jets to cruise in for the last little bit, but you shouldn't need to burn through too much fuel. Now let's say that on re-entry you see that you're going to undershoot the KSC by a lot. You can usually tell when this is going to happen once you hit an altitude of about 40 kilometers. If you are going to undershoot, you can either hold F9 and try again by raising the periapsis, or you can fire up your engines and push your trajectory out a little ways. The second option won't actually burn up too much fuel if you do it early, while you're at a high altitude. It works particularly well if your jet engines have enough air to operate. Pitch to your prograde marker, or even 10 to 15 degrees above it, and throttle up. From the map view, you should see your trajectory get pushed out past the KSC again. Don't push it out too far, or you might overshoot by too much. This takes some practice and experience to get right, but once you have a feel for how much the atmosphere slows your plane down, you can do this relatively easily. The last scenario is that during re-entry you see that your trajectory isn't pulling back fast enough and you're going to fly right past the KSC. Unfortunately, there isn't much you can do at this point. If you pitch below your prograde marker, you can try to force your plane to descend faster. Be careful any time you pitch away from your prograde marker, as the further you pitch away from it, the more likely you are to lose control of your plane. If you're still going to overshoot, you can try to turn around and fly back if you have enough fuel, or simply just reload and try again by lowering your initial periapsis slightly. I recommend the second option, as you really want to get a good idea of what altitude settings work best for your designs. I usually work up or down in increments of 1,000 meters if I'm not overshooting by a lot. If I'm not even coming close, I might adjust by 2 to 3,000 meter increments. 
So the basic idea is that once you've found a good middle ground for your periapsis setting relative to a certain orbit, you can use this as a reference point for doing reentries from different orbital altitudes. The general rule of thumb is that from a higher altitude you'll need to decrease the periapsis over the peninsula, and for a lower altitude you'll need to raise it. Pretty simple. For example, with this design at a 500 km altitude, I aim for about a 9 to 10 km periapsis. This brings me in for a much deeper re-entry, and also a much less efficient one, but it is reliable. I'm sure realistic modeling of the drag would rip this re-entry profile to shreds. <laughs> but for KSB, this works just fine. For a lower orbit, like 70 km, I set the periapsis to about 27 to 28 km, and it will bring me in fairly close. I was going to make a separate video for landings, but I can cover it in about a minute if I try, so here it goes. After you've cleared the mountains, you want to start working on bringing your altitude down. You want a shallow approach to the runway, so control your altitude by manipulating your pitch and even by using your engines if you need to pick up speed or altitude some more. My landmark is to be about 1000 meters by the time I transition from the grass to the flats. From the here, spend your time lining up the runway and your plane and glide down. The runway sits at about 77 to 80 meters above sea level, and it is very long, so don't worry about touching down at the very beginning of it. A nice tip that I saw Satoran give on Reddit is to set up flags at the beginning and end of the runway to use for lining up your plane perfectly on approach. Pretty handy. Try to touch down with less than 10 meters per second vertical speed, and once you're down, slam on the brakes. Feather the brakes if you want to be a little more cautious. I usually will also tap the F key to reset my SAS to be on level ground. If you have a lot of reaction wheels, SAS will usually try to keep your plane oriented at some weird angle, so pressing F once eliminates that problem. And that's it! A quick and dirty landing tutorial. If you need more help with landings or re-entry, leave a comment down below. If you don't have Google+, I can't reply to you directly, so if you want, you can join the conversation on Reddit or the forums. Links to both will be posted in the video description. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to press that like button. As always, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, take it easy.